Hi, welcome to this tutorial on transformations of trig graphs and in this one what we're going to do is look at this particular transformation y equals minus f of x. When you've got a function f of x y equals minus f of x represents a reflection in the x-axis. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with the three basic trig graphs y equals sine x, y equals cos x and y equals tan x. And what I'll do is examples on each one of these, okay, and hopefully you can see how they all look, okay, when we reflect them in the x-axis. So first of all, we'll just start off with this particular one, y equals f of x, where f of x equals sine x. So if we're to do this transformation here, minus f of x, it means that we need to multiply f of x by negative 1. So we're going to get y equals minus f of x is going to equal minus sine x. So what does the graph of f of x equals sine x look like? Well it's basically like this one here. Okay, well, we'll draw it on the graph. Okay, we'll just uh, stick that up. And you can see my axis go from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. And you've got your wave going between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so if we're going to reflect this in the x-axis to give us y equals minus f of x, minus sine x in this case, what's it going to look like? Well, you might want to pause the video just for a few moments and sketch what you think it's going to look like. And uh, just come back, restart the video, and just check to see whether you're right. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. And uh, let's just see what it's going to look like. There you go. So you can see that uh, if we take this point here, it gets mirrored in the x-axis and comes up to here. Points on the x-axis, these points, remain invariant. That is, they stay exactly the same. Point like this one just gets mirrored up here and so on. So hopefully you got the idea then of the graph of y equals minus sine x. A reflection of sine x then in the x-axis. Okay, well let's have a look at another graph then. We'll have a look at y equals cos x and do exactly the same again. So here's the graph then of y equals cos x, f of x being cos x. And again, if we try this transformation, y equals minus f of x, minus cos x, pause the video, have a go, see if you can sketch what it's going to look like. Okay, let's see how you got on. Just reflecting this graph then of cos x in the x-axis should look something like this. Well, we have one more to do, and that be the graph of y equals tan x. So, here's the graph of y equals tan x, f of x being tan x. And we've got the asymptotes drawn in where the graph approaches these lines. These lines at minus 270, minus 90, 90 and 270 degrees. And you should be familiar with this graph anyway. So again, we're going to look at this transformation, y equals minus f of x, which is now going to be minus tan x. So again, you might like to pause the video and sketch what you think the graph would look like. Okay, well let's just see how you got on. We've got to reflect this graph then in the x-axis. So remember, all these points on the x-axis stay invariant. Points up here go down to here, and points down here get mirrored up to here. And what you should have would be something like that. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea then of how this transformation y equals minus f of x works for these trig graphs. Okay? It represents a reflection then in the x-axis.